Welcome back to The Retreat, everyone. It is your host, Daniela Maris Owens, coming to you once again. And I have decided everyone loves a good relationship talk. So I, um, <laughs> I'm i still the single friend of all my friends. And it's funny because um, just recently I was having a conversation. And I was like, this would be a good topic to do. And one of my friends had asked me, she's like, Danielle, you know, you got a lot going for yourself. You're beautiful. Why are you single? Like, what made you decide that you weren't just going to settle for anything? And like, and here's the thing. Let me just be, let me push pen for a second. I'm not really out here, like, trying to date or looking. However, I think that I've had enough experiences um, <laughs> to know that there's just certain things. One, I took the pressure off myself. Let me just start there. And I think we a lot of times put unnecessary pressure on ourselves for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, for women, you know, you want to, there are a lot of women who still want to get married before they have children. And, you know, it's a race against time because unlike men, you know, the older we get, the harder it becomes. Um, some people love the idea of marriage and they just want to be married. I think for me, I went through all of that where I considered my age, I considered, you know, the pressures of society, especially being a pastor's daughter and being the only girl of all boys. Like, I've always had those conversations with people, whether they're my family or my coworkers or my friends. And it's like, we want to see you get married. And it's like, yeah, I want to see that too. You know, I have succumbed to a lot of the pressures and really worked towards trying to make um, something happen for myself. And just based upon pressure, not based upon like really understanding the person that I'm dating, not really considering what the needs of this person would be, how it affects me. It was just like, you're supposed to get married. You're supposed to have kids. So make it work. <laughs> like, um, and I think I finally got to that age now where I'm just kind of like, it'll happen and it'll blossom beautifully in its own time. Um, yes, I very much so want to get married and have children. Yes, I very much want to plan a beautiful wedding. Yes, I very much want to take maternity photos and all that good stuff. However, I am in no rush. I don't have any pressure to do these things. And more than anything, I have finally come to a place where I just like me. I like doing what I want. I like moving at my own pace. I like building my brand and building a name for myself and establishing myself as an individual. And I know I've been told this from the beginning of time, like you gotta still make sure that you have X, Y, and Z in order. And I think that until you do it for yourself, it doesn't matter how many times people tell you, um, I'm just now comfortable with who I am. And I know that might sound crazy to a lot of people, but like when I tell you I make no apologies for how I behave, for how I act, I mean, I'm not disrespectful. I'm not out here, you know, acting crazy and doing anything, but I'm just, I'm comfortable for the first time with me. I'm comfortable with the sound of my voice. And I used to hate the way I sounded. I, I'm comfortable at the pace in which I, I grow and I do things. I'm not in a competition with my peers. I'm just like, listen, you might have the house and I might not. You may have the new car and I may not. You may have the fine man and I may not. You may have the kids and I may not, but I have me. And before anything else is enough, I have to be enough. I have to be enough. And because I'm finally in that position, now I'm just kind of like, what can a man do for me? Unless you're going to help me grow and you're going to show me something where I'm like, wow, I'm going to fight for you. Like, I really want, like, I imagine life with you being something very beautiful. Like, if I'm sitting up here like, yo, I got to weigh out the good and the bad and, like, can I put up with this? Like, if I start doing that, <laughs> probably go quick. I'm probably gonna run if I have to start thinking about like, Dio, can you live with the fact that he snores like this for the rest of your life? I like to sleep uninterrupted. Uh, probably not. He doesn't, you know, I, can I live with the fact that he's not as spontaneous as me? And these may sound like very selfish things and 
again, I make no apology for that. Like, I want what I want because I know what I offer and what I bring. And I, would, I used to think that my humility was in, like, kind of uh, um, not allowing myself to be heard or to be seen. I thought that that's what humility was. I thought that humility was, um, even though I know the answer, don't, don't say anything, let him figure it out. I thought that's what humility was. And I'm finding that humility really is the ability to shine unapologetically, but also understanding what it took to get there. I love this girl. Like, and I say that, and when I tell you I could not, I could not mouth those words, I could not whisper those words two, three years ago. I could not tell you one thing I loved about myself. I was so hard on myself. I just beat myself up all the time over little things. Meanwhile, I'm accomplishing a lot. And I just, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it because my mind, I was so focused on the pressures of being able to have, you know, a business that was, you know, making a profit and having the husband and having the kids and having the bomb house and the bomb car. Like those were the pressures that I had. And because I didn't have what I thought I should have at that time, it was just like, oh, Daniel, you're nothing. You're never going to be anything. Like why you're lazy. You're this, you're that. And I, I, I literally like would look in the mirror and not like what I saw. I would look in the mirror and not appreciate the scars. I would look in the mirror and find something wrong with my teeth. I would look in the mirror and find that I thought my nose was too big, my forehead was too big. My, I mean, I was shaped funny. Like I would put on something that my mom would say, wow, you look beautiful. And all I can see was that my shoulders are wide and my waist is small and I'm knock kneed and I have big feet, like all of these things. It just, I was never satisfied with me. And now, y'all see, I pulled these braids back and showed y'all all this for <laughs> This big nose, oh, I'd never get a nose job. I thought about it. I was like, yo, as soon as I get some money, shaving this down, you know, I, I'm telling you, there were so many pressures. And um, when you talk about getting into a relationship, now I'm not one to judge and I'm not here to tell anybody else how to do what they're gonna do and what makes them happy and what helps them to sleep at night. I am no judge nor juror. However, for me, um, you know, I think it's funny now because when I'm asked that question, like, you know, well, why are you single? Why is there so much pressure on me to not be single? Like, I'm, the, I'm having fun. I love who I am. I love, like I said, I am, I've always been a loner in a sense, so, the freedom that I have that I didn't appreciate before, that I appreciate now, to up and go as I please, to if I decided to book a flight and leave, if I decided to, you know, take myself out to dinner tonight because I'm not waiting for somebody to hit my phone and I'm not waiting for a guy to ask me out on a date. Like, if I want to treat myself good, I can do that. And I think before I depend on anyone else to do those things for me, I need to at least know what it's like to do it for myself so that when someone comes, I'm not impressed by things that should just happen. You know what I mean? And I think we've done that too. It's like we get, as women, sometimes we, we're so impressed by the basic things because we've never had the opportunity to do it for ourselves. So when someone comes along and does something that we're capable of doing that we've never done, like take yourself out or buy yourself a nice bag or, you know, speak nice words to you, in my case, right? Um, as soon as someone does that, we're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm in love, you know? And we get tripped. We get real trippy over that. And I think, like I said, I've had enough experiences to know like the things that I praised men for, you gotta come better than that now. And that's not the put pressure on you. I'm just saying like, that doesn't move me. You know what moves me? Security. You know what moves me? Can we laugh? Can I let my hair down? Can you see? this Danielle, and then behind closed doors when no one's around, see the very vulnerable, I'm um, having a hard day, and the nice, smiling, always giddy girl is now like, <laughs> like I'm rolling my eyes every time I, I, I do something or I hear somebody's voice on the TV, like, you gotta be able to take that too. And 
because I know that that's who I am and there are so many dimensions of me as a woman and as a human, um, I don't want to ever have to front for anybody. And that's where I think I'm at today. Like, I don't want to front. I don't want to give you my representative when you meet me. Like, and that's not to say that I'm going to pour out my heart as soon as I meet you. Like, this is who I am. No, but I'm free to be myself. Whether you like it or not, whether you can handle it or not, it's not going to change. I'm not going to conform because I'm trying to impress somebody because of the pressure to be with somebody. And, um, yeah, I don't know what else... I don't know how else to put it. Like, you know, so again, the same question that used to make me very uncomfortable, um, where I felt like I had to have an explanation ready at every turn, I'm just kind of like, what? <laughs> like, what do y'all need from me, <laughs> you know? Um, but again, for those who are in their marriages and in their relationships and they're happy, that's wonderful. And I, I really do hope one day I have that as well. But I don't, I don't want anybody to feel like because they don't have it yet that there's something wrong with them. And I think subconsciously we don't realize that that's what we're doing every time we're like, well, why are you single? Well, what's wrong with you? And we're making people feel less than because they don't have a relationship. And... I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right. And I think the more we do it, the more people end up staying single because in their head, they're going through all of the things that they feel like um, justify why they are not with someone. And these are people that truly desire um, to have that type of romantic relationship. I mean, I know I do. I just feel like I just want to be true to me too. And I don't, I don't want the pressure. I don't want the pressure. I want to be able to live because at the end of the day, I go to bed with me at night. At the end of the day, I wake up with me in the morning. At the end of the day, um, when it's tax season, <laughs> um, that's all me. Um, I am an individual. And, you know, the important things in life really are decided upon the one who walks in their truth. And that's how I feel. So we're going to get into a lot of relationship be um, episodes here on the retreat because I feel like those are the ones that gain so much traction and I think for everybody for the single for the widowed for the divorced for the unmarried for the married I, I find that everywhere people are talking about relationships because at the end of the, at the end of the day we were not designed to be alone whether that's romantically or a companionship like we have to know and have to learn how to function one of the greatest things that I ever learned especially uh, actually I heard this just last week. I'll never forget. And another reason why I think I've taken the pressure off of myself. I was talking to one of my mentors and she was telling me about a couple that she counsels and how the woman felt like, you know, she had to be the wife that cooks and cleans. And but she was with a man who didn't require that. You know, she would make meals and he wants cereal for dinner and she you know, as a woman, I can see, even for me, because that's what I thought it was. It was like, when I become a wife, I got to cook, I got to clean. Let me tell you, I throw down in the kitchen. And a lot of the reason or a lot of the motivation behind learning how to cook as well as I cook is because I'm like, I'm going to be married one day and I got to be able to do this. Not considering that maybe I'm going to marry someone who's like, you know what? I got the money. We can eat out every night and I'm fine with that. You ain't got to slave for me. Like, then what? Then what do I have to offer? I have to offer me. You get what I'm saying? So these are, you know, life lessons and life hacks that I've learned over time. And it's crazy because when was somebody going to teach us this stuff? Like, when was somebody going to teach us that regardless of what you think a wife or a husband is, you really don't know if that is going to apply to the person that you actually end up with. And if it doesn't, what are you going to do? Mind blown. Seriously. Um, so I think it's important that... Um, we dive into a lot of these relationship talks because they're necessary. They're really, really necessary. We have to break away from not tradition or the old school way of thinking because I do feel like it does hold a lot of the foundation that we need to survive and to thrive. However, I think that we also need to be flexible enough to be able to adjust to the situation at hand and to own it for the two people that are in it, not based upon what we heard. I don't want secondhand information for, for a situation in my life that at the end of the day, whatever happens right here, I got to be able to live with. So yeah, maybe textbooks said do it this way. Maybe 
Aunt, Aunt Jenny said do it this way, and maybe my mama said do it this way, but out of all of these different opinions and, 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 and all this advice that I'm getting, what is going to work for me? It sounds good, and I'm sure it worked for you, and I'm sure that history and, you know, the research has said it this way, and I'm sure my mama said, because she thinks she know me, she knows her daughter, but she doesn't know the wife. It's not for her to know me as a wife. It's for her to know me as a daughter. So now I'm in a position where I'm somebody's wife and I gotta figure this out. So yeah, that, that's some real, some real meat to feast off of. So we'll get into that though. We'll, we'll, and I'll take a lot of your questions and um, we're, we will expound upon a lot of the comments. Um, so I'm excited about that. You, you guys can look forward to that. But that's all I have for today. Yes, stop asking people why they're single as if something's wrong with them because they ain't got nobody. Because ain't nothing wrong with me. A lot, a little bit. I mean, it depends on who you ask. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. We'll close on that note <laughs> before Mike starts getting on me. <laughs> All right, y'all have a good one.